Good morning, Wham Women of God, awesome women. Um, I hope that many of you in the Wham group are able to join in on this um, live session. Um, my name is Faith Marie Badsko, and probably some of you don't really know me and uh, maybe joined through other people. I am the, the, the president, the founder of Wham Women, which is Headstone Women's Apostolic Ministries. And um, it's a group that is, um, was, is God's idea because um, I was busy about doing, running the ministry and um, pursuing the things that God had called me to do. And that's in teaching and doing online schools and as an itinerant minister and seminars and whatever. And out of the blue, God just downloaded this idea of Wham Women. And I believe um, his idea was that um, the vision for this group is that together, the women together, moving together, are far more powerful than we are individually. And um, the term for that is synergy. Or in, uh, in military terms, it's a concentration of force. So together we have power to impact the world far more, far greater than, than individually, even though we, we might be quite successful and powerful in our own ministry, in our own lane, running our own race. But together we can do something that has more impact against the powers of darkness and to build the kingdom of God. Because it's in union where God commands the blessing. He says where the, the brethren dwell together in unity, he commands a certain blessing upon that. It says that the oil is poured on the head and then it flows down the body. And um, I believe as we come together in groups, um, in ministries working together, individuals working together, that God pours out his oil upon the head and it, um, it begins to move down the body and it uh, works to bring us into a, a cohesive force uh, to, to bind us together in Christ where we have far greater impact in um, especially in these times in the, in the times that we are living in and uh, it's just crazy times and um, and we need uh, uh, we need a force we need the body of Christ to rise up we need women to rise up to, to fulfill the the divine call that God has on their lives we need women to open their mouths we need women to to let their voices be heard powerfully and you know the enemy has been moving you know in, in a really powerful way in these times but you know as God says he turns everything for good God is moving in a far more powerful way where you may not see it but you know this was the year we started 2020 and last year at the he you know the Hebrew year 1580 was all about the voice and the decade of the voice and um, and and our roar and having our voices heard and then COVID happened and then we had to wear masks and um, we couldn't go to church and everything was silenced but I've found and I've realized that my voice has far more impact since COVID than before COVID because God just started to open doors into um, to, to start initiatives where my voice would be heard and I'll share some more of that but even just you know everybody started um, speaking and starting shows on Facebook live and on the internet and beginning to do some things that they never thought they would have done before previously so I was doing seminars and sometimes conferences so how many people can you impact at a seminar or a conference you know a hundred maybe a thousand maybe two thousand maximum but how many people can you impact through the internet if god takes your voice viral you can uh, you can impact millions 
even hundreds of millions. You know, and um, earlier this year, I heard the Lord say, we're going global. I didn't understand that. Um, I didn't, because I didn't know how, how on earth that could happen. I didn't really have the skills on uh, social media or anything to make that happen, although I did make a feeble attempt. But um, God has his ways and means, and he started to change things with one phone call. And as I said, I'll talk about that later. But what I'm saying is God has a plan, and he's seated on his throne. He is a sovereign God of heaven and earth. He, The earth is the Lord's. Canada is the Lord's. America is the Lord's. And he does have an incredible plan. We just don't understand his ways, which are so much higher than ours. And um, in time, we begin to clue in and begin to see um, the marvelous things he's doing in, in, in the darkest times. And that will affect, have far more, far greater impact than they would have normally. So let's just stay in a place of strength, of faith, of trusting God, not losing our, our faith. And I hope uh, Wham women are not the, you know, the type of saint that's, you know, going to be shaken easily by any anything happening in the earth. Our faith and our trust has to be so strong, so firmly built upon God that uh, we're not shaken by anything. We're not shaken by anything and the enemy has no place in our lives and, and he will not stop us and shut us down. Where one door closes, another one opens and we press forward in the power and the might of God and of his Holy Spirit. Nothing can stop God. He is God. Nothing can stop God. And we've got to get that into our spirit, man, that we are moving forward more than ever right now. We have to press forward in strength to make our voices heard. Wow, I just uh, I just heard Jim Caviezel give an interview about this new movie he's doing. I didn't really, I saw the previews, but I didn't really know what it was about. It was... It's about the uh, persecution of Christian Christians in Iran and Christianity, where they are killing, imprisoning, and, and torturing Christians. And uh, wow, did he ever make a speech of faith um, that he learned even doing the Passion of Christ? He, he, you know, he had two heart surgeries. He was struck by lightning. He broke limbs. He, you know, he went through hell doing that movie. But he learned from reading the Bible and from Paul that, you know, that it doesn't matter that if, it, if we lose our lives, we are going forward and nothing is going to stop us. And that's what this film is about, that uh, it, the, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ is worth laying our lives down for. It's worth rising up. It's worth the persecution. It's worth opening your mouth and letting you, what God has given you and put inside of you, let it be heard without fear, without, um, without a fear of the consequences, that we have a bigger God, that we, we have to start living like the saints in the book of Acts, that we, we can do anything for God, we can press forward, and he will back that up, he will back up that kind of faith. You will start to see miracles and wonders. I'm starting to see miracles and doors opening because I'm, I'm not letting things stop me. I'm pressing forward and um, just keep going. You know, there is a part of me that would love to just um, have a cottage on a lake or a river, sit by a window and write and read and maybe learn knitting. I would really love that. But that's not who God created me to be for this hour. And there's a drive. There's something in me that he's deposited. And it's working in spite of myself. In spite of my desires to sit down and lay down. It, I just can't. There's this thing inside of me. It's the, it's the energy. It's the force of God that's saying, get up and keep moving. And I pray for all of you that you have that inside of you. Because you have been gifted with incredible, enormous gifts for the, specifically for this hour in history. You, you were born and created for this hour in history, given gifts for this hour of history, and you cannot sit on it. 
You have to rise up in the faith of God and begin to do what he calls you to do. He will back you up. He will begin to open the doors. He will crown you with glory. He will put his favor upon you. The favor of God will provide for the gift and for the destiny he has for you. So back to us being a group. Um, that's wonderful. And each of us have to do that individually. But I believe that God is putting an a special anointing upon those who choose and are willing to partner with others and come alongside others and uh, do things together and become a body because in the end we have to become a body we have to become a bride Jesus is coming back for a bride not a bunch of individuals running their own race he's coming for a bride and that means a cohesive body that has learned to join together and work together and to actually even love each other as difficult as you think that may be and um i i don't know i guess again it's in spite of myself it's nothing special that of who i am god has just put something in me that um that um I just, as soon as I, I get a, a break or a miracle or something happens, my first thought is, who can I bring alongside me? Who, who can this bless? How can I bring that person with me? And uh, sometimes I wonder, why am I even thinking that? Because I have so much on my plate that, that um, for my own life, where is that coming from? But God has put that into my DNA, and that is part of why I even have this group called wham even though it's it's um it's another thing it's another it's an added thing to to what i'm doing and maybe for for some of you it's an added thing and maybe you haven't paid much attention to it maybe someone invited you and you just click join and um don't really know much about it or why you're even in it so i'm here this morning to challenge you to think about this because um as I said, God birthed this thing and he has a plan in mind for it. And sometimes it's it's just a matter of steps of obedience following God blindly. We don't know really what he has planned until he does a suddenly. Something opens or a vision comes in. It's like, whoa, the lights go on and oh, we understand that's what this is about and I believe we're going to have those moments in this group. But we first have to take the steps of obedience to just uh, begin to come together into a and uh, create an atmosphere where he can say, yes, this is what I'm looking for. And yes, I can crown this with glory. Yes, I can come into that and do some impossibilities and do some amazing things. And I hope I'm stirring your spirit because uh, you have to think beyond yourself. We have to think beyond our own individual ministries. We have to think outside the box and bigger than ourselves. What God is doing is so bigger than who we are individually in our own little corner, in our own little box. He has something magnificent and majestic planned for planet Earth and for this hour and um it's not going to happen with you alone doing your own thing and um and so i'm hoping to stir you to think along the lines of union unity coming together so the question is are you willing it's going to require an embracing of the cross and um surrendering our identities and to take on a corporate identity um a corporate dynamic body is what he's looking for that he can inhabit to produce his transcendent possibilities you know one thing that god has been teaching me for years and i'm still trying so desperately hard to learn it is persevering in relationships we are each so uniquely different we're like these incredible jewels before God, treasures, treasures in his crown. But each one is so different. 
different personality traits, different characteristics, different ways of talking, dressing, looking, you know, so different. And we tend to gravitate toward people who are just like us. And when we encounter those who are so different from us, we begin to be suspicious or judge them or criticize them and not really spend the time to understand who they are, that they're different from us and maybe they're just doing something a little bit differently or maybe that's just the way they speak and that's just who they are and that's how God created them. That's uh, They're reflecting a different facet of Christ than we are and so many times when I've wanted to, um, you know, just end relationships, I just feel God's heart is saying, persevere. And, um, and, um, and it's been difficult sometimes because sometimes, you know, people, we're all in process and we're all walking through things at, at different rates, but we're, going, we're moving. We don't, and we judge people where they were at and not where they are going. And God has us all in process. We're all going somewhere. He is not leaving us where we're at, even in our sin, whatever. He's taking us somewhere. And we tend to judge people from actions or whatever. So I've learned to think of people, well, you know, maybe they said something wrong. They did something, you know, offensive. But God is not going to let them get away with that. And he's working on them. And, um, and as I release, you know, just release them and re release grace, release forgiveness, you know, and next time I see them, it's just not even there because God has done something in their heart. He's moving in each one. So we have to learn to persevere in many, many, many relationships that I would have given up on. I still have them today because I persevered. I mean, I can literally say there's only been maybe one or two that I just literally I had to separate from. But um, he, this is God's heart. He is the God who blesses. He is the God for each one of us. And he, if he's in, if he lives in our hearts, then we should have the heart where we are for each other. We, our desire is to bless each other when a door opens for each one of us we want to hold somebody's hand oh, i just feel god in that and take them with us where we're going and as i said this is not me this is god's heart he is uh, moving and he's trusting he's trusting leaders and trusting leaders with that gift that when he blesses them with an open door, that they're going to be a blessing to others. They're going to hang on to a few other people and, and take them with them into these new places. And so, you know, if, when God opens a door for you, there are so many others who may not know it, but they are waiting for you to um, press through that door because that door opens as you are a forerunner that opens that door for others. Actually, God showed me a scripture this morning and I just want to read it to you because it just, I was thinking of these things, just open the Bible and this is what it says. And I'm reading Philippians 2 and I'll read from verse 1. To maybe 11. It says, and this is Paul speaking, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, any encouragement from being united with him, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like minded. We have to be like Christ. If he's in us, I mean, it's not rocket science. Having the same love, being one in spirit and in purpose. Being one. He's speaking to a church. He's saying being one in spirit and in purpose. There was a, There is a purpose, a, a corporate purpose for a church. Are we joining in with that corporate purpose? 
There's a corporate purpose for ministries. Are, are, are those who you're bringing alongside, are they joining in, in the vision of that corporate purpose, encouraging and supporting it? It goes on to say, um, do nothing. Do nothing out of selfish ambition where it's just about you, just about your glory, just about your recognition, just about your fame and success, your financial whatever and um i think god is so so desperate for his people to get over themselves and uh, just lay down their lives on the cross like jesus did for his glory and for his kingdom and for his corporate purposes so he says do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit but in humility consider others better than yourselves i'm going to just stop here because that's not an easy thing to do we read that and we just gloss over it because it feels almost impossible to to uh, consider others better than yourself and um that's uh, i'm in process with that also you know um God just, in my immaturity, in my early years as a Christian, just crowned me and downloaded so much revelation and stuff that it really puffed me up when I thought I was this awesome thing. And, you know, and um, it's taken years and years and years of God saying to me <laughs> over and over, you know nothing. As much as you think that you know, you know nothing. And whatever you have has been given. So, you know, you take take Jesus away from me. Take the revelations he has given. You know, I'm really not anything much. And I'm learning to recognize that. That it's all about him. It's all about his anointing. And, um, and in that, in that persevering, because I've had to be so intentional. Because... Uh, part of me just doesn't even want to bother, but I've been having to be so intentional about um, blessing others, seeing them with God's eyes, seeing the gift in them, seeing the unique glory in them, uh, actually learning to, to, to love the uniqueness of people, just seeing the, you know, the, each one as a, a, a jewel and each one's, and being fascinated by by their uniqueness and the way they speak and who they are and the revelations that they get and you know and learning to actually begin to love people and admire them and i see so much magnificence and so much gifting and anointing in people that i it has just humbled me to realize that okay so i'm not the only one <laughs> it's not all about me and learning to see people in a new way and the possibility of considering others better than myself and just letting them shine and, and letting them take the front and the front, you know, I've always liked to give people the front seat. I'm a backseat person because I just want to sit there and think, but even in life, just letting them shine. And um, it's a battle. I'm not saying I'm not uh, that I'm there because I'm continually fighting within myself with old ancient emotions that want to come and dominate my thoughts that that are founded on competition and comparison and jealousy. You know, those things show up, but it's with intentionality that I say to that thing, get out of here. I'm not going to have any part of you get out of my life. It feels ugly. It is ugly, and um, it is demonic. God hates it. When, it. when it even touches my spirit, I hate it. And I'm so upset that it even, could even touch me. And my, I want I, my prayer before God. Is that my first response? Not my second or third. My first response will be joy and celebration of others and love of other people. 
that my first that would be my first response my first reaction would be wow that's awesome not you know checking your spirit like oh how did they get that or whatever that is a fight that is a fight that that is in an intentional fight and resisting that thing continually until it has absolutely no place in your life and you become that person whose first response is joy and love and blessing like Jesus that lives in us. Anyway, I'm not even saying anything I intended to say so far. But let me continue on with this. It says, doing nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only at your own interests, your own ministry, your own revelation, but also of the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as the Messiah, Yeshua, who being in the very nature of God, he was God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. You know, there's a God complex in Christians where they, they think they are buddies with God and they have, they have the, I don't know, the mandate of God just to go and be God and to do what, and to speak for him in pride without any humility. But he did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing. Jesus did that. He made himself nothing. Taking the very nature of a servant, being made a human, being made in human likeness, and being found in the appearance of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place. Do you want to go to the highest place? I do. But it doesn't come by jostling for power and pushing yourself where God is not pushing you or doing things or trying to make it happen, running ahead of God in presumption. You know, it doesn't come by that. It comes by humbling yourself. It comes by loving others. It comes by holding hands with others and going forward together. Then we will see God come in such power and um, and crown us and uh, do some incredible incredible things through us for this hour of history. We are we are wasting time with that old junk. I'm just looking for something. We're wasting time with the garbage. We need to fight it and move on and overcome it. God is going to bless the overcomers who overcome this stuff. I'm working on a, a prophetic word that just started yesterday. And, um, and that's the, one of the things God is showing me. He's moving on because, um, and there's going to come a separation because God is moving on and he's going to move on with those who have been willing to let go of the garbage and, and willing to be obedient and um, willing to follow him and follow and pick up their cross and uh, be about the kingdom, God's business and the kingdom. Um, he has to. He, there are things to do right now. The world is crying out for the sons of God. The world is crying, crying and travailing for the sons of God. And he's going to move forward now with the sons of God. So, you know, those who are unwilling to even take the time to try or to, you know, want to just wallow in the, in the pig pen with jealousy and all that junky stuff. Well, then, you know, they may have to go around the mountain a few more times. So, you know, I, um... 
I have been wanting to do this for a while because I've been so busy and I, this has been on my mind, the YM group. I'm like, God, you started this group. What is it for? What, you know, I'm, it's just sitting there and I, I, I haven't had time because I've been birthing a whole lot of stuff. And so I'm thinking, God, what is it? What do you want us to do? And, um, and he gave me a couple ideas that I want to go over with you right now. But before I do that, um, I just want to say, and I said this in the last video, which was a long time ago, and um, not too many people have picked up on it, and I was kind of sad about that. But, you know, God, you know, I'm thinking, what does trying to build together look like? And it, it just starts with little simple steps, little simple things. It looks like just taking an interest in someone else. You know, it looks like us taking the initiative to post in the WAM group, the things that we're doing, our passions, our initiatives, sorry, our events, posting it, others in the group, just taking an interest, just take an interest. Whoa, that looks pretty good. You know, let me encourage that person. You know, support them with a kind word. Like it, share it, or just make a nice comment about it. Encourage them in their efforts. Simple things like these will begin the process of binding us together. You know, and there are some who have been doing that. And I know everybody's busy. I know, I know we have lives and children and ministries and churches. And, but it only takes a, a second or two to just to make a little comment. You don't have to write a, a paragraph. Just say something. That's great. You know, go girl. Whatever. So, um... Please, if you can do that, you know, begin to post your own stuff. You know, this group is not really about posting, although I do let that in sometimes. It's not about posting other people's things. We have our own Facebook pages to do that. And, um, and the main timeline, we can post a lot of stuff. But unless it's really ex uh, outstanding, that's something that we really all need to hear but I really want everyone to begin to post their own things, their own uh, initiatives, their own passions, even, even a, a revelation God gave you that morning that would bless others. Just post it. Share it. You don't know how it's going to affect someone else's life. So um, apart from that, so that will begin to, to build us, I think, together and um, give us a heart for each other and we may, we may not, you know, have physical contact, but somehow in the spirit, we're going to begin to be bound together and have a heart for someone that we've never even met. I've already developed that. I've, you know, people in the group that have connected with me or have posted things. I just started to have a, a feeling for that person without even knowing them. So, um... How are we going to harness this force of, I think we're about 140 women. And I don't know if all the women, even after this talk, are going to want to even, some may, may want to just move on and think this is not for them. And that's okay, because I'm not about the numbers. I'm about quality and, and the quality of relationships, of becoming a body in Christ, becoming one. And um, so... What was I saying? Anyway, God has revealed that with pressing on into the fullness of his intention in three specific areas, that if we do this, nothing will be impossible to us. And the commanded blessing will be released and come upon us. And there's three areas that I just want to focus in on, and that's in revelation, in, in the presence, and in union. I've talked a lot about the union already in and how we need to build on that, and um, even in our business. So I just want to touch briefly on Revelation, and this will cover also just an understanding of the times that we're living in. But it is important to have a revelation 
um, specifically for this dispensation, this hour, this decade that you have been called to live in and be a voice. Um, so we need this in order to be equipped for the times. If we don't have an understanding of the times, we won't know how to be equipped, what to do. Um, we need revelation significant to his plans and his purposes for this specific hour. And Ephesians 1.10 talks about a God-given stewardship for a, a specific time. And um, it says, with a view to an administration suitable to the fullness of times. And the time referred to by Paul in the scripture is referring to our time, a time characterized by fullness. And he continues in that scripture and he says that he might gather together in one, here's the union again, all things in Christ, things on heaven and on earth. So God is moving and the momentum is moving us toward union. And we need to get in on that if we want to be moving with God. So the fullness of times means simply that we have arrived at the appointed time. Fullness is the completion of God's work. And uh, everything is going to become summed up in Christ. So as we unite and join together, link arms together in Christ, we are working with God in that momentum, moving towards fullness. Because he will have a suitable administration in this hour, for, specifically for this hour. Sons of God and daughters of God, relief for this hour. So what is your stewardship? What does it look like? Because God says for every dis dispensation, behold, I do a new thing. Do you not perceive it? Are you perceiving the new thing God is doing? Are you perceiving the movements of God in this chaotic time? Are you perceiving and understanding the strategies that he wants to impart to you for your ministry and for your voice to be heard in this time? Because you are called to be a steward in this hour. The NIV puts it this way. It says to be put into effect. This is the stewardship. When the times reach their fulfillment. And the ESV says it's a plan for the fullness of time. So we need to get in on God's plan right now. So it's so important that we have an understanding of the dynamics of the time. Both the warfare and the glory. There is both. We need to understand the warfare. It's not all about glory. And we need to understand the glory. But it's not all about... Um, you know, it's not all about warfare. I think I'm mixing that up. But anyway, there's both. There is a battle, a massive warfare, spiritual battle happening right now. And we need to be engaged in that battle and be pushing back against it. And we also need to be entering into the joy and the glory and the presence and the magnificence of God and begin to walk through these times without fear without fear just trusting God we need to understand the framework and the boundaries of this time and your own boundaries of and spheres God has established for you because you have a sphere and a boundary and I, and please read my next word because um I think God's showing me some things but you know he did show me and I wrote about it in the last one I think I just posted um, about the, the, the reprieve. We are in a, a time of reprieve and uh, where God wants to get some specific things done. And uh, the saints need to wake up and realize that this this reprieve, this time, it's is temporary. We don't know how long it's going to last. It may last 10 years. It may last 20. But it has a set time. And uh, God has some set things to be accomplished in this time. And he's raising up saints and daughters and sons as stewards of this time. So we need to understand the times. He's given us a voice and he's going to open a door for your voice. He's releasing the power and the authority to press through and to press to fight at the gates and to press through the doors and the gates into the promised land of the things he has promised for us. He has given us great promises that we have been waiting on 
for you know for quite some time and this is the hour the promises are going to be released in the midst of chaos we're going to see glory we're going to see miracles we're going to see doors open we're going to see us established we're going to see finances come in the midst of the chaos god is establishing his people in their promised land so if we're lacking in knowledge and understanding of god's movements how can we partner effectively with him for our sphere so you know that it requires time giving god time and spending time with him to hear his voice for what he has called us to do and i better speed it up so the main focus that um not the main focus but one of the things that i felt to to bring today is um we each have something to bring to the table of something to offer to the group of of how even if it's an idea of how we can partner together how you know um how we can join and link arms together and do things together because that's how that when we come together in that force we're going to have such impact so i don't know all of you i know some of you and some of what you're some of what some of you are doing and i am partnering with some of you already but i just want to just uh, let you know what headstone ministries has to offer to anyone in the group and um and to help build this this group but it's not all about me i mean I've, lots of you some of you are amazing powerful leaders and can do open doors for others too that um and and help to build this body and i hope some of you you know some of you have admired for years and i'm in awe that you're even in this group but even just to release a prophetic word to us or a word of encouragement or just whatever we would be blessed by that so as far as headstone ministries goes you know we have a lot of resources i've been i that's what god has had me working on for 25 years well 20 years and um never knowing really what it was for or why it was not being used and i was just sitting there gathering resources with dust gathering on them but it was i didn't know god's higher ways it was all for this particular hour of history so i have prepared books online courses and then after i um and it was a lot of it got birth during covid which is amazing that god how god used this time in my life but um these um these courses he said to put them up to to all the my teachings and the things he had given me to put them together as courses online so i did that and we have a site called headstone academy so far i have four courses on there and intend to put some more but the lord said to me um which i had no plan to do came straight out of heaven make teachers manuals so i did that teachers and student manuals for each course so that others who feel they have a teaching gift or and maybe do not have resources to um they can use the teacher the teachers manuals and the student manuals and begin to to teach open your voice and do something you know and and here are resources that you can use and I'm sure, and there's other stuff out there great stuff but this stuff is a is really specific for this hour and um the fullness of times and um so you can teach it in cell groups you can have seminars you could even do a conference with it you know i have uh, contacts now and um associates in you know other parts of the world and, and they are in, in in Africa too a lot and they are so hungry for resources there and um they are using the teachers manuals and just going crazy over it and and uh teaching it everywhere and um I'm just so blessed by that and so I'd like to open that up to anyone I have friends in this group and i hope you're on or will listen to it in south america in the caribbean and dominican republic and you speak english you could take these courses and uh, begin to 
Begin to teach them. Do seminars with them. Use them in your cell groups. Begin to teach. Raise up other women or men. And um, mentor somebody. Even if it's one person. Start somewhere. Um, and it, it, it even includes PowerPoints. If you are comfortable with using PowerPoints. All the lessons and the, the, everything is lined up with the PowerPoints. Everything is done for you. That is absolutely nothing that you need to do other than open your mouth and teach the word. It'll generate a discussion. They, people will start talking. And before you know it, you're teaching and you have a ministry. So there, um, we can offer that to you. Um, because the Lord has said to pass on freely whatever he had given me from years ago before. You know, I was just a baby Christian. God gives me these big words and scriptures and I'm just like I don't know what that means and he said to me in Timothy 2 2 and the things you have heard from me among many witnesses commit these commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also so he has given me these resources to pass them on to faithful saints who will take them and teach them also, um, some very exciting news for that I have received. So God has just blown me away. I, I'm so amazed by Him. Oh, you know, I have been gone through times of just absolute disappointment and discouragement over the years. Thank God I've passed through that. I would say in the last maybe five to seven years that I don't get disappointed anymore or concerned or worried about what I'm doing for God or my destiny or when things are going to happen and I just have such a peace and a trust in him now in his timing and that I know he's he what he's done in me is for a reason and he when he's ready he'll do something with it but you know sometimes he tells me we're going to do things so like recently I said he said we're going to go global so Immediately I start to think, well, how's that going to happen? And starting to think of ways I can help him, which is ridiculous, to do that. And to maybe learn how to use social media and blah, blah, blah. And just struggling with that and not even having time with it. And just thinking, God, what does that mean? And how does it, I can't do that. So, so a few months went by and then I received a phone call. And um, Charisma Media has uh, this wonderful lady who said she'd researched my stuff and resources and words, and she was just so impressed by it. And she asked me to come on to Charisma uh, Media family. Of course, it costs, but what a door it is because uh, I, I can't go into all the, the details. I mean, it was a never ending blessing after blessing after blessing of what they're going to do for me <clears throat> so I signed a contract with them and I'm doing a weekly podcast right now on CPN um, Charisma Podcast Network but I'll also have articles on Charisma Magazine and um, the podcast is also now available on iTunes and Spotify and uh, on their YouTube channel and um and this is going to open a, a, a big door for not just me, because I feel it's going to generate a lot of traffic to our website. Oh, and, that, and what I didn't mention is in, during COVID too, God said to birth a media network for the Wham Women. This was during COVID and I, I, I did that. I built a whole website. So we have one, maybe a f just a few, a handful of women right now on that doing video shows that each have their own channel. So, um, and we're all learning this and I'm not jumping into it and trying to promote it and bring on a bunch of people all at once because I don't have the, the, the staff or, to, so I'm training, uh, my sister's joining me in this now and she's going to help and so we're going to start to have to hire people. But um, this is a door for the WAM woman, it's called WAM Media Network. And eventually, I'd like to connect with some of you, and um, we will connect with you in, in, in the timings. And um, 
because we only want to bring on you know like one at a time and and get someone established properly like we don't have the manpower to you know to take on five ten people even at a time so but that is a door god opened for me that i am willing to open for others to bring them on to our media network and and give them that exposure to even you know people like charisma and um that i can now recommend and um so you know because god has i've learned and it's not been easy i've learned to be a blessing to others because god has done that in me and and um i don't know why i keep doing this crying just so ridiculous but he's opening that door for me because he can trust me to be a blessing to others is what i'm trying to say and i want that for the white woman and i want our voices to be heard and i want us to become a force to be reckoned with in this time i want us to become a rise up to become bold ferocious lions for the kingdom of god and to become a group of women that people will look and be in awe of not that it will puff us up and say we're all that but we will be a an army of laid down lovers that army that is have laid their lives down on the cross for other people an army that can celebrate each other there's something new <laughs> that God wants to do and I'm it's like an experiment and I'm I'm excited to see what it's going to look like that a bunch of women actually supporting each other loving each other celebrating each other complimenting each other wow that is not something common in the world maybe even in the church you know because people can put smiles on their faces but in their hearts and their minds are saying something thinking something else i know that from experience but i've fought it off and i'm praying that we can fight that thing off and if we get rid of that out of wham and become truly lovers of each other what an experiment wait and see like i i saw i'm thinking what is god going to do with that i don't know but i think he has something planned the hidden you know he's he he loves suddenly and hidden things and just to bring them out suddenly and bless your socks off like this even thing with charisma i didn't know i didn't go after that i didn't have a clue and he just opened a door and blessed my socks off So I've said too much already. I've spoken for an hour, and I just pray you'll take these things to heart and consider them. Consider them. And uh, if you want to join in this divine experiment in Wham Group, I pray that you begin to be intentionally do something. Bless somebody today. Write a nice thing. Write a comment. If you feel that your life is too hectic or you're so involved with something else, and no condemnation, this is not for you. You know, please feel free just to. You can leave the group, and um, we want to build together as that body that the oil can come down over the whole body and bring us into that cohesive unity of love. So I bless you. I bless your day on this. I just think this is uh, God's plan too. That He said to do this, and it's uh, Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets. I think what I'm saying is a trumpet sound, you know. And um, I pray that your spirit will hear it as the sound of a trumpet of God's saying something that is important. So God bless you. Bless your life, bless your ministry, bless your family, and um, keep you safe from any anything, plague or otherwise, that you are hidden and protected in the arms, the everlasting arms of Almighty God. Thank you.